So we're going to dive right in now, and I have a couple uh, working papers instances open in the background. The first one coming up here is the SAMP01 file. I'll be using components of SAMP01 file that is installed with Caseware working papers to see items that we will be talking about and to help me create my first template. I also have a second instance of Caseware working papers, and I'm going to use this to start off today by creating a new working paper file from a blank file. So to do that, I'm going to click on New and create new file. Now my new file name is going to be called Caseware Zone Audit Template. And I'll just change the T there. And I want to put this file in my templates directory, so I'm going to browse for that. And that's typically found under the Caseware folder in the template folder. Now this is where it's going to be created, so I'm going to select the folder and that's where it's going to go. Now I'm going to start off with a new blank file because we're going to populate with our default content as we go through and I'll click OK. Now once that file has been created, it is not yet set up as a template. This will just take a moment to create the file. So we're still working in this file just as a normal file. Once created, this will take me into the engagement properties where I can set the template's default date. Now, my date is showing 2012 here, but let's say we're working on 2014 year ends at this point, and if you're creating a template now, you might want it set to the 2015 year end as that's coming up later in the year, towards the end of next year even already. I'm going to use a yearly uh, balance. That's going to be my default. Most of my files are just yearly, but you can set this to whatever you want in your template so that any file that you create will automatically have the period date sequences that you want. On top of that, the name and address field, if this is for a specific tax jurisdiction or a specific tax entity, that can all be set by default at the beginning as well. And of course, in the individual engagements, overridden where necessary. Now I'm going to click OK to accept the changes that I made to my engagement properties. 